we go into worship with him right now. Just close your eyes and just release. You've torn down some walls.
circumstances. He shows us things that we really have no control over. Some things we have a measure of control, but then there are some things we just don't control. So when the word says your power and work in me, amen, Amen. I'm broken gracefully. So when I'm feeling broken, you still give me favor. Hallelujah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When I'm down to my tears, and I'm feeling broken, there's something about the favor of God. I'm reminded I'm broken gracefully, so I walk in the favor of God. And then it says, I'm strong when I am weak. Did you know you're strong when you're weak? That's when the Lord is stepping in, and he's making you strong, and he's fighting on our behalf. And then it says, I will be free. And here, uh, the word says, here I am, God, arms wide open, Pouring out my life, gracefully broken. Can we sing that together? Arms wide open. open. Pouring out my life. Thank you, Lord. Pouring out my life. Gracefully broken. broken. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can we just surrender? We're going to sing it to you. Here I am, God. Arms wide open. Come on. Just surrender to him. Pouring out my life. I pour it out to you, oh God. And I'm gracefully broken. With favor, I'm broken. One more time. Here I am, God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. 
let's just worship him hallelujah 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 i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord this is your personal time this is our personal time pastor's not here because she has to be here pastor's here because she wants to be here i need to be here i need to be in the presence of the lord i need to hear the music anybody know what i'm talking about i need when the songs i need thee oh i need thee every hour i need thee bless me now my savior i come to thee hallelujah 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 lord in the name of jesus you see us as your people arms wide open our arms may not be able to lift like we used to but we lift our arms our hearts to you oh god and we say here's our life take it lord do what you want to do with it and we'll not walk in fear your word says be of good courage be of good courage and you shall strengthen our hearts in the name of jesus we pray for those that are sick we pray for pastor glenda and we thank you lord for healing her family's body her husband her, her children right now in the name of jesus brother perry thank you for healing him continuing the healing process lord we lift up our brother tyrone right now uh, cancer and kidney issues we thank you for healing and we lift up our nation oh god we lift up our nation in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus as we keep saying we humble ourselves we humble ourselves and we seek your face and we're turning we worship you we worship you oh god thank you lord for answering our prayers thank you for bringing deliverance in the name of jesus thank you for drawing us near to you we thank you we praise you we don't take this time lightly we thank you 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 lord we thank you lord in jesus name hallelujah you may be seated in the house thank you musicians for flowing with us give them a great big hand but i was glad when they said unto me and it's so good to see you let us go into the house of the lord i'm glad you made the decision we're glad you decided to come to church and we can worship the lord together i was listening to uh christian television uh this weekend and uh they were talking about freedom sunday and church is still not being able to meet or meet at capacity and we're so blessed that we can be in the house of the Lord. So when we come, we're going to take advantage of every opportunity that we have to worship him and lift his name up and get you rejuvenated for the week because you have to go out to battle. It's okay, you know, to be in the camp all together, but then you have to go out of the camp and you've got to face the world and the world is against us. Amen? It is against us, but greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. And man, the spirit of fear to leave right now in the name of Jesus. You know, fearfulness is coming over God's people. You know, fear of being sick, fear of jobs, uh, fear of finances, fear, fear, fear. But we speak hope because our hope is in the Lord and we know we can trust in him. And that's why it's important for us to gather together one of the things that the churches were talking about, the various speakers were saying, forget not the assembling of ourselves together. And why do we assemble together? To encourage one another and to lift one another up. So you may say, well, I just come to church and I fill that seat. Well, thank you, Lord, for you filling that seat. <laughs> Amen. We love you filling that seat because it's an encouragement to know that others are in the battle with us. Are you glad to be in the house? Let's give God a great big hand. We're glad to see you. We also have Thanksgiving coming up in uh, November. We're in November, praise the Lord. Uh, November, we're going to have Thanksgiving dinner over here. We'll social distance and all that. I've also been asked to speak, I believe, the week before, a few days before Thanksgiving at a women's breakfast. Uh, I was asked a couple months ago, I think it's all contingent on what the governor allows us to do. And if I do, I will let you know, we'd love to have as many of our ladies to come as possible. So are you glad to be in the house? One more time, you glad to be in the house? Yay! And we're glad you're here. We're gonna ask Minister Jason is standing right behind me, ready to bring us a good word about offering. God bless you, so good to have you this morning.
Good morning, PRC. How are you guys doing this morning? All right, some people woke up this morning, but I see more than just two, okay? How are you guys doing this morning? <laughs> a little better, a little better, okay. All right. So today I'm going to be giving you a quick word of encouragement on tithing. But before I do that, how many joyful and cheerful givers do we have in the house of God this morning? Give God praise, give him glory, and give him honor. For it is God, he is the one that gives us power to get well. So here in, if you have your Bibles, Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 10. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know how many times I read Malachi chapter 3 and 10, but I mean, there's still so much juice in it, man. It just, it just keeps coming out. <laughs> you know, God's word is so good that there's so much in it. So here in Malachi 3 and 10, it says to bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. The Lord goes on to say, to try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing, that there will not be room enough to receive it. You know, the thing that I love about the blessing of the Lord is that we don't understand what, you know, the size of it. We don't understand what it's going to be. We have our thoughts and ideas on what the blessing of the Lord looks like. But one thing I've learned is that the blessing of the Lord it's always the right size. See, I have some notes here that says, every blessing of the Lord is sufficient for every season we are in, according to his plan. Again, it's according to his plan and his purpose. Each blessing of the Lord is a perfect fit. And then I also said here in my notes that every blessing of the Lord is unique to our time and season that we are in. And it's fitting, again, at a point in time. So many things, you know, raced through my spirit, you know, as I, as I looked at the scripture again and looked at it. And I, I just remember before coming here to Hawaii and my wife and I had all our stuff in storage. <laughs> we had a 12 by 30 foot storage locker. Now, some of you guys heard what happened to that storage locker. But I come to tell you today what God told me to do with it. <laughs> See... The thing about it, God kept speaking to my heart and said, you have too much stuff. You have too much stuff. So you're thinking like, I don't have too much stuff. And you start looking at it. And so each time we went to the storage, you know, it was filled from wall to wall, front to back. And each time we go, you know, you make a little bit of dent. It's kind of hard to get rid of stuff sometimes. <laughs> but the Lord was saying, you have too much. I kept hearing him say that. So little by little, we kept taking stuff out, giving it away, selling it, whatnot. And we got to the point where we were like, yeah, this is, this is good. You know, we had everything organized, situated. It, it looked good. Now, in my mind, in my wife's mind, we, you know, took it down to what was fitting. But the thing that we didn't understand is where God was taking us to, the season that he was taking us into. So to shorten that up, we lost our storage because it came down to me paying tithes or paid storage. And it was one of those things on the edge, like I just have enough time if I pay my tithe and then I get paid Wednesday night, I can pay my storage and still make it. Didn't make it. <laughs> it didn't make it. <laughs> so part of that testimony, I paced in the room back and forth and I didn't know what to tell my wife. <laughs> I didn't know how to tell her because you have to understand what we had, okay? We had enough kitchen equipment to, tar to start a turnkey operation for catering, okay? Everything we could ever need was in there. I don't care about the household goods, but the, the work that went into there, so this is my profession. And I didn't know what to tell her. <laughs> so I, I called her and I was like, are you sitting down? <laughs> and I began to tell her what happened. And, uh, I told her what God told me. <laughs> and I wish I would have brought my other prayer book, but God asked me because he had to stop me from pacing. And you know how somebody call your name, but you're so focused that you can't hear him. But he was like, Jason, Jason. And I'm just going, and finally I'm like, yes, Lord. <laughs> and he's like, am I not rich enough <laughs> for you? <laughs> and he went on to say that some other things that he said was that what he was going to do because he said, at this point, I have not lost, 
but I have now gained. I didn't understand then. But he went on to say <laughs> that I will repay you double <laughs> for that which you have lost. Now, the beautiful thing about that, everything we have, we don't have space for a 12 by 30 foot storage. In the previous townhouse we lived in, I don't know where we would have put it. I don't know where we would put it in the house that we're in now. <laughs> but if that wouldn't fit in what God has blessed us with now, how much more is God willing to pour out and to give? He made his promise to me and he made his promise to you. When God makes his promise, it is sure and it is true. It is something that you can lean on in and you can trust in. And then, listen, I'm just telling you, this is kind of crazy because, no way. <laughs> to short it up, I can't go into the rest of the testimony, but that happened on Thursday night. And Bishop, I don't know if you remember, you're on the phone with Pastor Drew. It was Tuesday night after pastoral training. I, I didn't know how to talk about it. Only me and my wife knew. But I was going to my car and Bishop yells across the parking lot at Joaquin Milo. And he's like, Jason, do you guys need any furniture? <laughs> I'm like, yes, we do. <laughs> Do you guys need this? Do you need that? And God already began to answer the praiser, a prayer on Tuesday. That was Thursday when I thought I lost everything. But then God began to show me that he is beginning to restore. So get this right. The blessing is for an appointed time. And I'm going to continue being faithful. Because <laughs> I know that the double is still to come. <laughs> so trust God in all that you do. He's not a liar. <laughs> He's not. I wish I was done with my book. Because <laughs> it would testify of the goodness of God. And that he is sure and he is true. So today, if you have your tithes and offering, I don't know if it's your last. I don't know the season that you're in. <laughs> you may be in a season where it's dry. Or maybe even a season where it's winter and the ground is hard and it's hard to sow. But you must find some way to sow, to plant, to give. God has given us such a great vision here at PRC. We reach so many people. They have planted so many people throughout the nations. So many people know about this church because of the vision that God has given us in this house. If you look to your left and your right, in front of you and behind you, this is not all of us. <laughs> the United States Army doesn't put everybody at Fort Campbell or Fort Drum. You can't put everybody at one camp. You know that? It takes money to send out armies of believers and to support the ministry of the armies of believers. And that comes through the tithing and giving that we give in this house, whether it's through video or whether it's through pamphlets or whether we got to send Bibles to somebody so that they get the word of God. Now I got to stop. But I'm going to say a prayer. But after I'm done saying the prayer, we're going to say the vision statement. Get the vision statement in your heart. Get it in your heart. Get it in your heart. You cannot become a partaker of something if it's not in your heart. The only thing that's going to come out of your heart is what's in your heart. And it will show that you're a partaker. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for giving us an opportunity to tithe and to give into your kingdom. Father, we thank you for the blessing to our, our seasons and times that we are in. It's a perfect fit. No matter the season and the time that we're in, it is more than sufficient for the time and season that we're in. And I thank you and I praise you as we trust you, Father, as we sow, Father, as we give, as we tithe. I thank you for the multiplied return in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now please stand and say our vision statement with all the directions of the ushers. Just follow along. I'm gonna try to go slow, but sometimes it gets exciting. All right, all right, all right. All together now, God has given Pacific Revival Center a mandate to train and equip and send out armies of believers to minister the gospel to all nations. He has anointed and qualified us to preach the good news, to bind up and heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives, and to open the prison doors and eyes of those who are bound. He has sent us to comfort all who mourn, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise 
place where the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called to righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And we shall be called priests of the Lord and shall be named ministers of our God. And our descendants shall be known among the nations and our offspring among the people. And all who see them will know that we are people whom the Lord has blessed. Please follow the directions of the ushers. I tell you, mercy is to, to, to deal with your sin. Grace is to relieve you of the consequences of your sin. Amen? I call grace the currency in the kingdom of God. You give your offering. Paul says you give your offering and you get grace. And grace is greater than money. The, the word of God says, it's, it's when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemy be at peace with him. He makes, he, the Lord taught me a lesson on that years ago. He said, I don't care they don't like you. They're still going to bless you. They're still going to bless you because I've ordained it. Amen? I've ordained. God ordains people. That's how grace works. Amen? So we don't worry about all of that. We just move on with God. That's why our focus is on Jesus Christ. Not on what, I'm not focused on the color of my skin. I'm not focused on what's going on with that because what man can shut a door that God is open. If God opens the door, you just got to get out the way and let me through. You can't keep me out. If God ordained me to be there, you can't keep me out. How many of you believe that? How many of you live that? How many, how many of you live that? Amen? You guys just, you can't just believe it. You got to live it. Turn with me in your Bibles back to our foundation scriptures we started on last week. We're going to pick up where we left off last week. Last week I was talking about the seven ways God loves us. And the seven ways that God loves us are the seven ways we should love others. Amen? The seven ways that God loves us are the seven ways that we should love others. Jesus gave that command, and he told him, he said, he told the, told the Pharisees, he says, you should love the Lord your Deuteronomy. He was, he was preaching Deuteronomy to them. The greatest love. Somebody say, what is the greatest love? We're going to talk about that today. The greatest love of all. Amen. How many of you remember that song back from the 19th, from the 70s, The Greatest Love of All? I know some of you saying, no, that wasn't the 70s. That, no, that was, that was George Benson. Amen. I'm telling you where the song came from. Y'all think it was Whitney Houston, but uh, it was George Benson. Amen. <laughs> Amen. This girl came out in 74. Right? 75, matter of fact, right? Amen. Uh, the, the Bible said, the greatest love is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And then Jesus went on and put an added to that scripture. He says, and on these two, he says, the first is just like the second, and on these two hang all the law and the prophets. All the rest of the law and the prophets hang on those two right there, loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind, and loving your neighbor as self. Amen? All that hangs on. Every other, every other verse in the Bible hangs on those two scriptures, on those two right there. Amen? Hangs on those. We talked about that last week. And we said, who is our neighbor? Who is our neighbor? I, I define the neighbor as the one you, the one you hate the most. That's your neighbor. <laughs> the one you hate the most is your neighbor. The one you hate the most. The one that needs your help, that's your neighbor. Those, those kind of neighbors we don't like, aren't they? <laughs> we don't like those neighbors. I'm, I'm going to move. Because <laughs> right? I like that person on this side of me. And I don't like the person on this side of me because they always need something. Right? And, and the one the Lord brings into your life, that's your neighbor. The uh, proverb says to uh, dwell safely by your neighbor. It says your neighbor dwells by you for safety's sake. So it says do good for your neighbor because they dwell by you for safety's sake. For safety's sake. For your safety and for their safety. Amen? Your neighbor. So we should love others the same way we are to love God. Isn't that something? Look at somebody say, you should love, you love the one you hate the most the same way God loves you. Amen? <laughs> Look at somebody say, heart, soul, and mind. Heart, soul, and mind. Amen? So today's big question, why is love crucial to the greatest commandments? Why is love crucial to it? Why not faith? Most of us think it's faith. No, it's love. It's love. 
Paul, Paul defined that. He says, you can have the greatest faith in the world, but if you have not love, if you have not love, amen. When we hear the term commandment, we often think about the Ten Commandments outlined in Exodus. We think about the ones outlined in Exodus, the Ten Commandments. However, the Jewish rabbis determined in, in, that the law consisted of 613 commandments. 613 commandments. And all the, those 613 commandments hang on those two commandments. Jesus was saying, all that stuff you're doing hangs on these two. Amen? 613 commandments. And they categorized them into greater and lesser. I'll tell you right now, there is no greater and lesser law except for the greatest law, which is to love one another. Amen? And to love God. Amen? That's the greatest law. All the others are lesser laws. Amen? All of them are, uh, it, it, it's, it's like this. It's like, I, I like people say, uh, people used to say, if you don't quit smoking, you're going to hell. I say, if I don't love the Lord, I'm going to hell. And smoking ain't going to do nothing, but you're kicking a dead horse. If I don't know Jesus, I'm going to hell, and anything else I'm doing is kicking a dead horse. Amen? It's kicking a dead horse. The Bible, the, the Bible defines itself. Look at somebody say, take it or leave it, because you can't change it. You can't change it. It will not change, amen? Their own understanding of the law, and they tried to strictly follow every single one of the 613 laws. That's rough life, isn't it? That's a rough life. Consequently, during the New Testament times, confusion existed among the people as to the purpose of the law, and which laws were more important? Which ones are more important? Which ones should we spend our time on, right? They spent time and effort trying to keep or not violate any one of the 613 laws. Think about that. What a way to live. And then they had the law police, right? The Pharisees and the Sadducees that walked around all day and see if you was, uh, did, you, did you eat some corn in the middle of the field? Did you do some work on the Sabbath? They were the, the, the law police walking around. They, 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 get, they, they doing that today. Do you got your mask on? I'm going to turn you in. I'm going to turn you in. You got your mask on. If, you, if, you're, if you're spending time and effort trying to keep or not violate what is written, then it's written in the wrong place. That's my note. If you're spending all your time trying to keep what is written, then it's written in the wrong place. It should be written in your heart. Write it down. Write it down. It should be written in your heart. And then you don't have to spend your life trying to keep it. Because your heart is the place where the law belongs. And if you put it in your heart, and the Lord, and the Lord prophesied that in, in Isaiah, he says, in these last days, he says, well, I'm going to come and I'm going to write my laws on the tablets of their heart. Of the heart. It's not going to be written on stone anymore. It's going to be written on our hearts. And when we get it in our hearts, guess what? We have the strength and the faith to do it. Amen? We have the strength and the faith of Jesus. Do it. When Jesus was teaching in the temple one day, the Sadducees attempted to trap him in his words. After Jesus silenced them, one of the Pharisees who saw what Jesus did to the Sadducees asked him to identify the greatest commandment. What is the greatest commandment? The Lord's response shut the mouths of his critics. And Mark says none of them dared to question him again. They didn't ask him anything else. I'm going to leave him alone. I'm going to leave him alone because he's just messing all of our religion up. Amen. None of them dared to question him again over in Mark chapter 12. And Jesus said the greatest commandment was to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Isn't that something? Get this now. This response would likely have, it went over well with them because they prayed that twice a day. They, they literally prayed that when they got up and went to temple. We shall love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, and our mind. Before they left the temple that day, they would pray. We shall love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and all our mind. So they liked that response that he gave them. Amen. They prayed it twice a day. That was part of the prayers that the law said they should pray every day, amen? However, it was what the Lord said next that silenced his critics. He proclaimed, the second is like it. The second, get this, the second is just like the first. 
The second is just like the first. The second commandment is, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as yourself. It's just like the first one. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Love your neighbor with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. It's the same, isn't it? It's the same. I know some of us, we ain't liking that at all. We're not liking that commandment at all, huh? It's a, it, what, what a great summary of the law. Think about the Ten Commandments. The first four commandments deal with our relationships to God, which is why we are we're to love him with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind. The final six deal with loving our neighbors, dealing with your neighbor. The final six, the other six deal with loving our neighbor. Notice he did not say we need to learn to love ourselves. Amen. He didn't say we need to learn to love ourselves. That's, that's a modern false teaching that has been passed around and has even gotten into the church. Brother, you got to learn to love yourself. You know, the Bible tells us that we ain't got no problem with loving ourselves. What we got a problem with is denying ourselves. And the Bible tells you you need to deny yourself. See, we can look, at, we can look around and say we, we love ourselves a little too much, don't we? We ain't got no problem loving ourselves. Jesus gave that example when he was talking about the marriage relationship. He says, husbands, love your wife as you love yourself. When you hungry, you want something to eat, do you? How many of you don't deny yourself anything to eat? How many of you have to, well, let me put it this way. How many of you have to work at getting yourself something to eat? <laughs> Ain't got no problem with that, do you? You ain't got no problem with loving yourself. If you leave it up to me, we would never have to get up and go anywhere. But I love my, I had to deny myself, say, I got to get them go to work today. Some of us love ourselves too much and we can't even get them go to work. Because we love ourselves too much. We just too in love. With, I, I don't feel like doing that today. And since I don't feel like doing it, I'm not going to do it. Amen. Uh, uh, that, 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 that we have a problem right now. Jesus said, it says in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, it says, and he said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. How many times? Daily. <laughs> Daily. And follow me. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 says, for people will be lovers of self. Of course we are, because that's what they're teaching us today. Brother, you need to learn to love yourself. Look at somebody and say, that's the easiest thing to do is love yourself. That's why you're in trouble, because you love yourself. We got people sitting in jail because they love themselves. Jesus instructed us to love others as we love, like we already love ourselves, right? It says, I find that, I find that to be the issue today. We love others as we love ourselves. That's the problem we have today. We love others the way we love ourselves. Because we don't want to deny ourselves any privilege. We expect other, we accept other ungodly lifestyles. We accept other ungodly lifestyles because we don't, we wouldn't want you to deny me my lifestyle. The song written by George Benson, The Greatest Love, has the last verse and it says, learning to love yourself is the greatest love of all. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's not the greatest love. Learning to love others is the greatest love. Look at what the scripture says, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. So men ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. No man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourish it and cherish it, it even as the Lord the church. Nourish it and cherish it. We nourish and we cherish our flesh, don't we? Now, what, let me say what nourish and cherish don't mean. It don't mean lift weights. Nourish and cherish does not mean I'm going to go on a five-mile hike. How many of you consider that nourishing and cherishing your flesh? How many say, I'm going to nourish my flesh today. Let me go run two miles. How many think that's nourishing and cherishing it? <laughs> no, we don't do it. We don't at all do it when we, when we have to go through that workout like I was talking about last week. Army guys spend 20 years in the Army running every day. As soon as they get out, they stop. And I'm thinking they did it because they loved it. <laughs> no. They didn't love it. They did it because they were commanded to do it. Amen. As soon as they get out, they stop. If I've been doing it for 20 years, I think I'll keep it up for the next 20 years. No, oh, no, no, they don't. They don't. Amen. 
because they nourish and cherish that flesh. I'm going to sit back here. Let me see what we're eating today. I'm going to binge. I'm binging today. Ariane, what do you be binging on? I'm binging today, and binging ain't no good without the food, is it? Watch your programming. How many of you go and say, I'm going to binge and watch uh, the whole series of whatever show you like, and you say, but I'm not going to eat anything while I'm doing it. I'm not going to drink anything while I'm, I'm going to just drink water while I'm binging. How many of you do that? Because you love yourself. <laughs> you love yourself, amen? What Paul and Jesus is saying is, it's, inherent, it's inherently in us to love ourselves. That's already in us, to love ourselves. I show myself how much I love me. Last night, as soon as I finished dinner, I showed myself. I said, I'm going to mix this ice cream with this ice cream and see what that tastes like. Why? Because I love myself. Amen. <laughs> On the contrary, I have to control how much I love me. I have to control how much I love me. Because I'll overindulge in loving me. Am I right? If I don't control it. Why, why'd you miss work today, brother? Because I was, just, I was just loving myself. I was just out having fun. Work wasn't going to be fun today, so I didn't go. I mean, you still go, even though you knew it ain't going to be fun tomorrow. Amen? I don't have to do that. I'll overindulge. We talked about it last week. All our favorite scriptures. What's your favorite scripture? All our favorite scriptures we like to use, we like to quote, hang on these first two commandments. In other words, they don't work without them. I'm the head and not the tail. Hangs on loving the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind, and loving your neighbor as yourself. One of my favorites, Psalms chapter 34. I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord. And he answered me. And delivered me from all my fears. It hangs on loving the Lord, my God, with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind. Amen. Verse 6 says, this poor man cried. And the Lord heard him. And saved him out of all his trouble. Hangs on loving the Lord, my God, with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind. And loving my neighbor as myself. Amen. We love quoting Jeremiah chapter 29, 11. How many can quote that one? How's it go? I know the plans I have for you. I know the thoughts I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end that only works with loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and loving your neighbor as myself. How do you know that? Because how many can quote? We can quote Jeremiah 29 11, but can you quote verse, 13, verse 12 and 13? Can you quote 12 and 13? And then ye shall call upon me, and ye shall go out and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye search for me with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Hallelujah. Isn't that something powerful? See, we can quote, the, we can quote verse 11, but how many can quote verse 13? Then ye shall call me, you shall seek me, and you'll find me when you do it with all your heart. Uh, let's, let's, you, you guys got to leave your education out of it. I got to leave my degree out of it because that ain't going to help me love God. My degree won't help me. My, I don't care what I got my degree in. It won't help me love God. What helps me love God is seeking him. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness and every, all the rest of the law will be added to you. Amen will be added to you. You see, verse 11 doesn't work apart from verse 12 and 13. David called on him. King David called on him. King David sought him. But how about you? Do you call on him? Do you seek him? It doesn't work. Verse 11 doesn't work apart from verse 12 and 13. You got to do both. Amen? It, do, it, it doesn't work because of this. It doesn't work if the heart, it doesn't work because if the heart it's not in loving the Lord and loving your neighbor. You'll give up in the day of adversity. 
You'll give up in the day of adversity. When adversity comes, you'll give up. You'll give up if your heart ain't in it. If your heart ain't in the loving the Lord and loving your neighbors, you'll give up. You'll faint in the day of adversity. You'll faint. You'll give up. You'll quit. Amen. If your soul is not in loving the Lord and loving your neighbor, you won't deny yourself. You won't deny yourself when there's a, when there's a need. When a, there's a need for us to pray right now for our nation, you say, well, you know, uh, I would. And, and, and we put out on, on Thursday that we're going to be fasting this week because there's a fast that started on the churches that started a fast on the 17th of October. And they said, let's fast. Let's, let's offer God a fast all the way up until the 25th of November. And it's not just praying for the election in our nation. They're praying for God to come in and intercede and get rid of and overcome that spirit of pedophilia. And sexual, um, what is it? What, snatching women off the streets now? Sex trafficking, that's the key of that prayer. But if we don't love the Lord, then we won't love the things of God. What do you, I was saying on Thursday night, what do you think is the most important thing to God right now that this nation needs to deal with? Abortion. And sex, sex trafficking. They said, we're talking about the, the COVID pandemic. They said sex trafficking is a pandemic also. Literally, our nation is becoming like other nations where, where it's dangerous for our, young, our women to walk down the street and go to the store by themselves. We're getting ready. Do you know the reason that they wear the, wear the veils, over, put the veils on the children, the girls and the boys when they're little? They, they made a religious thing to them. Uh, Islam made a religious thing out of it, but that's not where that came from. They used to do that during Abraham's days. They would cover their children up so you wouldn't know whether that's a boy or a girl. So when you snatch them, you didn't know what you're getting. That's why they did that. They would cover them up. Now we see that coming back, don't we? We see that coming back. Coming back where we, we have to figure out how we're going to protect our children. If we don't do it, what the Lord says, he, gave, he already gave the word, word, word in the book of Job. He says, and he said when John the Baptist came, he came in the spirit of Elijah. He says, because he said, if he, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children unless they smite the earth with a curse. Well, we got the curse. Now let's turn the hearts back to the children, amen? Let's turn our hearts back to the children. But the way to do that is we got to learn to love the Lord, our God, with all our hearts, all our souls, and all of our minds. If your soul is not into loving the Lord and loving your neighbor, you won't deny yourself when there's a need. You won't deny yourself when there's a need. You say, yeah, I know he needs it, but I don't feel like getting up and going and doing, being the one. We got some people in here that's really, they're really into service, and I thank God for you. Because you'll get up and go out of your way to help others. Amen? And you'll deny yourself. A mother of Virginia will still go pick somebody up if he needs to. And out of everybody in here, she's the one that could say, well, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> And I'm tired, and Mother Virginia, but she don't never, you'll never get tired, do you? I said, you'll never get tired of going picking people up, do you? She'll go do it. She'll go do it. But we'll deny ourselves, no, you know my favorite program's on tonight. We won't deny ourselves. We won't deny ourselves. Eh? We won't deny ourselves. Some, some of us want the position, but we won't deny ourselves to go do what the position requires. I want to be promoted. When I first started my Bible study, when I was first going to ministry, I had one of my friends, he said, let's pray. He would come to Bible study all the time, and he was a teller at a bank downtown. And he said, I'm praying that I can get promoted because the, the position of head teller is coming open. And I'm praying that they'll give me that job. We prayed for a month for him with that, and he got the position. And then I got, as he got the position, all he did is complain about it. You know what they want me to do? They want me to train other people. You're the head teller. Now, they want me to train other people because they want me to, they, they want them to take my job. You're the head teller. If you don't train others, how they get trained? Am I right? We want the, they want me to stay late. Look at somebody say, deny yourself. Deny yourself. Deny yourself. I, I'm going to give you an experience that I had with one of my managers. I gave, I gave him the position of manager at the Navy had what they called a serve mart at the time. It's the same thing they have in the GSA stores. And I made him the manager of the store there in Pearl Harbor. And we, were, we knew we was letting this, this cashier go because she was 
nothing but complaints about her. So her last day was going to be on Friday, and I was on the mainland looking at another contract. I said, okay, let her go after the end of the day. And he said, okay. And so he came to us and said, well, we're letting you go today, but we still need you to close the store because I ain't got nobody else to close the store. And I got to pick my wife up. His wife was in the Army up at Tripler. And I got to pick her up from work at 4 o'clock. So you still close the store. So he left her there to close the store. How many of you would do that? How many of you would do come back with no money? <laughs> Where the money go? <laughs> they left with that person that you left to close the store that you just fired. It wasn't the money because we didn't have cash. But what she did is she turned off all the power in the building. So all the medical reefers were shut down for the whole weekend. And next thing you know, they're trying to build our company $80,000 for all that medical product that they was going to have to throw away, the Navy was going to have to throw away. I had to go do some research, and I got it down to $15,000. I had to call every manufacturer I could call, find them the manufacturer, call the Navy Resale Systems Office to find out where they bought all that stuff so I could find out how long it could be without power. You know? But then he says, but I didn't have anybody else that could close the store. I said, you could have. But I had to pick my wife up, get on the phone, call her, say, honey, I'm picking you up an hour late today. She's in the army. She used to that. And I'm telling the truth. How many of you was getting ready to go home from work and you was on active duty at 4 o'clock and they said you can't go nowhere? What did you do? You said, well, I'm going anyway. It's 4 o'clock. Y'all going to have to pay me overtime. <laughs> I had one of my friends didn't feel like getting up to go to work when we first got to our first command out of boot camp. And we, was, we, were, we had gotten this apartment in Seattle. And we were stationed over at Bremerton on a ship in the shipyard. And he said, I don't feel like going to work today. He called in sick. <laughs> you said, y'all don't understand that because y'all wasn't in the military, but all the military people didn't laugh. He called in sick. I'm not going to make it. I'm not feeling well. He came in the next day. They, they just took the... the, uh, uh, the uh, um, Officer of the deck just took the call, said, okay, and wrote it down. He ain't in my division. He ain't in my department. I could care less what he do, right? But the minute he walked in, walked on the ship the next day, they arrested him. He was under arrest. Why, why am I under arrest? <laughs> you don't call in sick. You better be standing in that line, or you better be in emergency. <laughs> we can't deny ourselves. And the Bible says we got to deny ourselves, Amen. If your mind is not in the loving the Lord and loving your neighbor, look at somebody say, don't separate those two. Do not separate those two. Do not try to separate loving the Lord and loving your neighbor. Amen? They both go together. I'm going to love the Lord, but I ain't loving nobody else in the world. Matter of fact, I'm just going to commune by myself. I ain't going to church. I ain't going to be around none of y'all. Y'all all hypocrites. Don't separate it. If your mind is not in the loving the Lord and loving your neighbor, when the fiery thoughts of the devil come, your, come, come upon you, you'll stop believing. You'll stop believing. When those fire, if you don't love him with your mind, you'll stop believing. You'll stop believing to see the good. You'll see bad in everything. You'll see bad in everybody. Somebody will say something to you and it'll upset your whole day. When the queen sent the message back to Elijah, it upset his whole day. Next thing you know, he walking 40 miles, 40 miles to try to get away from her. Amen? Because his mind wasn't into it. Amen? His mind wasn't into it. Which ones affect me depends on what, I, what is needed at the time. Loving the Lord with all my heart. Loving the Lord with all my mind. Loving the Lord with all my soul. Which one affects me is what I'm dealing with at that time. Think about that. What I'm dealing with at that time, amen. I should, I should by this time at least master one. How many of you say I've mastered one of those? Loving the Lord with all my heart and loving my neighbor. Loving the Lord with all my soul and loving my neighbor. Loving my Lord with all my mind and loving my neighbor. We should have, we should have, how long you been saying? You should have mastered at least one of those, amen? At least one. I'm getting very close. I'm getting very close. At least one should have been, um, been mastered by now, amen? At least one. 
I can tell if you've loved the Lord with your soul because when there's a need, you deny yourself. Here, brother, I, I was going to eat this, but you, can, you won't even have to say that. You won't, you won't even say, here, brother, I was going to eat this. This is my last, but I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> you just give it to them. They won't even know it. You, was going, you was going to eat it, and that was your last. You just give it to them, right? You feed them first. But loving ourselves, all of these. Let me give you three examples, and we'll close with that, huh? Which one affects me depends on what is needed at the time. Three examples, real quick. Number one, in 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 14, the king of Israel, when Elisha, the prophet, was dying, when he was dying, and in 2 Kings chapter 13, he was dying, and the king came to visit him on his deathbed. And think about that. He came to visit Elisha on his deathbed, and Elijah asked him, said, what is it that I can do for you before I die? That's a powerful man, isn't it? That's a powerful man. What is it I can do for you, O king, before I die? And he says, and he, Elijah tells the king, he says, um, I, deliver your enemy into your hands. What, what, what do you want? Right? And he said, deliver my enemy into my hands. He says, he tells him, shoot the arrows out, out the window. Right? And he shoots the arrows out the window. And then he says, now bang the bow on the floor. Right? And he does this number on it. I'm, I'm not going to destroy anything. He says, and Elijah looks at him and says, King mind, you're foolish. He said, you should have banged it five or six times. He said, then you would have utterly destroyed the king of Syria. He said, but now you're only going to defeat him three times. Three times because your heart wasn't in it. Your heart wasn't in it. Your heart was in me. Our heart can't be in that person that God sends to bless us, Brother Booker. Our heart has to be in God. Our heart has to be in God. His heart was in the king, in the prophet. And all he saw was that the horseman, he said, oh, the horse, horseman of Israel is getting me passed away. What are we going to do? You're the king. You're the king. You're the one that got the army. It was prophesied about you. He, the, the, the Lord told Elisha, he says, go get King Jehu and put him over Israel. And this was Joash, his son. And whoever Jehu misses with the sword, Hazael's going to get with the sword. And whoever Hazael misses with the sword, Elisha is going to get with the sword of his mouth. It was prophesied, but his heart wasn't in it. His heart wasn't in it. See, our heart has to be in it. Our heart has to be in serving God. Right now, what's going on today? Tell somebody, put your heart in it. Don't let your, David said, my heart and my flesh may fail, but God is the strength of my heart. He'll strengthen my heart. He will strengthen my heart. Amen? Trust in the Lord with all thy, what? Heart. With all thy heart and all thy mind. And all that what? Strength. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, the high priest. They've had a few high priests since Moses has initiated the high priest ministry. And they've had a few high priests there now to get to Eli. And he had, was it, two or three sons, Phineas and Hopniv. And Phineas, he had a couple of sons. And they were sleeping with the women. They were taking, they were taking the offering when the people would bring their offering up. They was cutting, you got to give me half of that. They were mistreating everyone. They were mistreating everyone. And because his soul wasn't in it, because his soul wasn't into the ministry of being a high priest, he just let anything go on. Let anything go on. Any, any lifestyle go on that you want to go on, that's okay. I'm, I'm not going to deal with it because... When your soul ain't in it, look at somebody say, when your feelings ain't in it, you'll be lazy. <laughs> Too lazy to deal with it. Too lazy to deal with it. And then what happens, God says, let me raise up somebody else. Let me get somebody else. And he brings a Samuel along to replace Eli. To replace Eli. And Eli, he confronted and said, what is this I hear that you're doing? I hear that you're doing all this evil. But he didn't deal with it. He didn't deal with it because his soul wasn't into it. His soul wasn't into what God had called him to do. And number three, J.R.S. How about J.R.S., amen? J.R.S., if my mind is not into it, 
that I can be easily swayed by whatever I see on television. Whatever I see on television can change what the Word of God says. It can change my understanding of the Word of God and how the Word of God applies to my life. Amen? J.R., he was a ruler of the synagogue. He was a ruler of a synagogue. So he was also a rabbi, ruler of the synagogue, and he comes to Jesus for help. And along the way, a woman with an issue of blood for 12 years, for 12 years, this woman has been sick for 12 years, spent all that she had trying to get better, and nothing worked. All the doctors, nothing worked. But now, this woman has been sick for 12 years, and on the way, she says, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And she touches him, and it stops him. She's hoping she, he, would, he would just keep on moving, but it stops him, and he stops and says, who, who touched me? The Bible says, because he felt goodness go out of him. He felt vir virtue go out of him. And I can imagine J.R. is saying, why are you worrying about that? Let's go focus on my daughter. Let's focus on my situation. Amen? And then while all that conversation is going on, his servants come and says, don't trouble the master any longer. Your daughter is dead. And Jesus says to Jairus, only believe. Only believe. And J.R. says, Lord, I believe. But help. Help my unbelief. If you don't love the Lord with your mind, Guess what? How many of you know you're gonna have? How many of you know you're gonna have times, chances to unbelieve, to, to not believe? Something that you've been a scripture that you've been quoting for years, you're gonna get a chance to not believe it. How many of you know that? Is that true? There's gonna come an opportunity where Satan's gonna be throwing fiery darts at you. Fire, how, how many of you know what a fiery dart is? The thoughts just keep on. Thoughts just keep on coming. Amen. Thoughts keep on coming, and you're trying to deal with it. How do you deal with those thoughts? The Bible says, and above all, taking the sword of the Spirit, which is the, um, is, is the sword of the shield, which is the Word of God. But to do what? Quench all the fiery darts. All those fiery. How many of you were going through some fiery darts? Had some fiery darts last week. You're going to go under. You're going under. You're going under. You, you, this, ain't, this ain't coming out good. Now. Ain't no possible way this could come out good. No possible way. But if you don't love the Lord with your mind, it's not, look at somebody say, it's not about your intelligence. It's about what you think. Isn't that right? It's not about your intelligence. It's about what you think. You ain't got to have, a, well, if I had a medical degree, then I could think better about my situation and my sickness. It ain't got nothing to do with that. It's about what you think about God. Amen? Stand to your feet as we get close. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Do you receive that word today? Let's give God a great big hand. Love the Lord with all our heart, with all our might. Do you know, I, as Bishop was speaking, I, I could hear just in the back of my mind, well, what about those people that commit suicide, do you know, and they're told that they should love themselves? Well, I'm going to tell you, if they love God first, love God the most, then they will take care of what he says, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen? You know, and depression will hit. We, we live in a world where depression, well, that's just the enemy's job, is to bring us depression and oppression. And, do you know, if you love the Lord, you're just going to say, God, I'm going to trust you. And, and then we love the Lord. And then it says, what's the next thing? Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, if I love my neighbor, who's my neighbor? Whoever is around me, other than me, that's my neighbor, my children, my husband, my spouse, my friend. What impact is me taking my life going to have on all those people? So when you say, I love the Lord, and we tell people, well, you need to love yourself. I love that. Love God. Love God the most. Love God the most. Do you hear what the word is saying, love God the most 
Focus on him. When you're feeling the most, the down, love God. And, and when we're ministering to people that feel like giving up and, and they're depressed and they're discouraged and they just want to jump out the window, do you know? And we're living in a world right now where it's all about us and we just want to give up and now we need to focus the attention on the God who created heaven and earth. And he will not put more on us than we can bear, amen? And then it says, love our neighbor as ourselves." Don't focus on me. When we say love yourself, love you just need to love yourself. No, love God and love others. And if you love God and you love others, you love your mother, you love your sister, you love your brother, then you're not going to harm yourself. Amen? Is that true? If you love God and you love what he created, if you accept that you are you and I are fearfully and wonderfully made, and he has a purpose and a plan for us, our focus will be on him. We'll get through that valley. Do you know we're a mature church, so we're not just talking to you for yourself. I'm talking to you for others, others that need to hear the word of God. Amen? Others that need to know that it's not, a, it's not all about you. And that's what the world is telling us. It's about you. Feel good about yourself. Do, do for yourself. But the Bible tells us, love God, love God, love God, love God. And help us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Pastor Michelle. I'm going to ask you at this time to bow your head with me. If you're standing next to a family member or somebody that you love, grab their hand so that we might touch and agree in prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we've heard your word on today where you have commanded us to love you with all our heart, our might, and our soul. I yield my mind to you, Lord, oh God, and I, I cast aside every thought, oh God, and come to distract me right now, and I yield it to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. I, right now, God, I yield every part of my being and existence, my heart, to you, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Teach me how to love you the more, God. Teach me how to lay aside every weight and sin that so easily beset me that I may run the race that is set before me, God. That I would love you, God, in spite of what I see, in spite of what I hear, in spite of what I feel, God. That I love you with every part of my being, oh God, even when I feel like I've been mistreated, uh, when I feel like I've been hurt, God, when I feel like I've been pulled down, when I feel like, God, that I'm giving everything God and I, it doesn't seem to be reciprocated and I'm not getting back God but knowing God that you see it all you know it all and because of my love for you I press today God I, I press toward the mark of God which is in the high calling of Jesus and I refuse to let anything oh God uh, separate me from loving you God to stop me from loving you God because your word said that nothing can separate me from your love no height no depth no width nothing stops you from loving me and so God then knowing that I won't stop loving you God I won't stop serving you God I, I won't stop living for you God I won't stop giving unto you the author and the finisher of my faith help me Lord Jesus help me not faint let me not faint when I don't seem like things are going in the way that I like them to go let me not faint Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Somebody out there today is struggling. Lord, uh, hallelujah, God. We, we see in our military, we see veterans 17 a day are dying by suicide because they lost hope, oh God. They felt like they are not loved, God. Not reminding them, God, uh, every veteran, that the Lord loves you. And we love you too as the word of God has commanded in the name of Jesus, I want you to turn to your person and I want you to say, I love you with the love of the Lord. Tell somebody, I love you with the love of the Lord. We love the love of the Lord. I love, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. God, help me take the love of the Lord everywhere I go. I want you to get it in your spirit. Help me to love that person that might seem unlovable. Help me to love, oh God, even that person that prosecute me and, and God misuse me, God. Help me to love them. It don't mean that I have to take abuse. 
that's not what we're saying Lord but within my heart let me not hold any malice let me not return hatred for hatred oh God for your word said hatred is as to murder not commit murder within my heart God but help me to love them and not their sin and their ways and help me God to be a reflection of you God in the midst of it all God teach me Lord teach me Lord Jesus help us Lord Jesus help us oh God we're in a season and we're in a time oh God where we know that we need your love God not our kind of love but the love of Christ that transcends all transgressions it transcends oh God all things oh God hallelujah in the name of Jesus help us Lord Jesus God we thank you this this would be a church oh God full of your love God that when people come in here that are laden with heavy burdens oh God that they'll find rest in PRC that they'll find refuge in PRC that they'll find strength in PRC that they'll experience the love of the Lord and God somebody God I right now as I get ready to close this prayer I speak to the one that don't know you in the pardon of their sin and I invite you right now in the name of Jesus to come and experience the love of the Lord Come and experience the love of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus who died on Calvary that you might have life and that more abundantly in the name of Jesus. You that feel alienated in the name of Jesus, come and experience the love of Christ. And today I yield my heart, my mind, and my soul to you. Take my life, Lord Jesus, and do what you want to do in the name of Jesus. For our young people, I dare not close. Some of you have been told that you are nothing that you amount to nothing that you are not loved and your life is not value but I come against that lie in the mighty name of Jesus I cancel every assignment of the enemy that comes to kill, steal and destroy and I render the work of the enemy powerless in your life right now and I speak and remind you that God wonderfully and made all of us in the name of Jesus and that he made no trust and he made us to have a relationship with him and when that relationship with him is strong the relationship with others will be strong in the name of Jesus I come against every suicide of thought in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah and I speak life in that more abundantly through Christ Jesus if you receive the love of the Lord and you're willing to share the love of the Lord give the Lord a hand praise right now let them know let them know let them know I love you Lord I love you Lord hallelujah in Jesus name amen and amen aloha and welcome back wasn't that a great word did you receive the message has God just touched your heart and built you up encouraged you uplifted you and given you something to think about and carry you forth for the rest of the week well we're going to go before the Lord in prayer and ask him to solidify that word bring that word back into your mind bring it to your remembrance so that you will always have victory in him so father in the name of Jesus we just thank you for the word that's been deposited in our hearts it's been deposited on good ground and we thank you that it will bring forth great and good seed Lord we pray a blessing upon all of our listeners we thank you for each person that's taking the time out to listen to your word and to receive what has been spoken now we pray a blessing upon them bless them and keep them in all of their ways may your face shine upon them give them peace keep them in good health deliver them them from areas that they need deliverance, bring salvation, bring healing, and we stand in agreement with the prayers that they're praying to you, knowing that you said, ask and it shall be given, seek and ye shall find, knock and the door shall be open. And your word also says, your promises are yes and amen. So we stand on your promises. We thank you again for your presence and for your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Thank you again for joining us. We're so happy that you could be with us and we encourage you to write us, send us an email or Facebook comment. We'd love to hear from you. Again, we'll be back here next week at the same time. We also have Bible study on Thursday evenings at 7.30 Hawaii Standard Time. So we encourage you to join us. Be blessed until next week. Aloha.
Mahalo for tuning in with Pacific Revival Center. If this message touched your spirit, make sure to subscribe and follow us on all our social media accounts to connect with our online family. If you're already a follower, share our content with your family and friends. And if you'd like to support the ministry, click Give Now below. Our mission is to train, equip, and send out armies of believers to minister the gospel to all nations. And together, we can send the love of Christ to all corners of the world. We'll see you next week here at PRC, the place to be.